Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about class hierarchies in C++. And simply put, when we talk about a class hierarchy, we're just saying that a base class itself can be derived from another class. And so we'll look at what this looks like and see some examples of it. So we'll start off by creating our first base class, and this will be class square. And class square is going to have a single private variable, which we'll call x. And as part of its public interface, we'll create a constructor and we'll have a parameter for it that will have a default argument that will be used to initialize that private x variable. And we'll give it a accessor and a mutator. So we'll do something like void set x and that'll simply update x. And then we'll have an int get x method, which will be an accessor, which will return x. And then we'll provide a get area method. So get area, the formula for a square is going to be, you know, x times x to get the area for a square. So this is our base class. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a derived class that is derived from square. So this is going to be class rectangle and it is going to be a square. It is a square and we're just going to add another dimension. So we'll call that Y. And then as part of our public interface, we're going to have a constructor. So it's going to be rectangle and we're going to do a similar kind of thing. We're going to give it two parameters that are going to have default arguments. So we'll call one I, we'll call the other J, and then we'll invoke the constructor from the base class and we'll pass it the I parameter. And then we'll use the J to update our private Y variable. And then we'll have a access or mutator. So we'll have set Y, which we'll simply set Y. So Y equals J. And then we'll have an accessor, which is simply going to return Y. And then we'll have an overridden area method, get area method, which is going to return the area of the square. So it's going to calculate and return that. So it's going to be uh, get X times Y. And now what we're going to do, and this is where the hierarchy part is going to come in. What we're going to do now is that this class rectangle Yes, it is a square and it's derived from class square, but it's going to become the base class for class solid, right? Which is going to add a third dimension. We're going to do class solid and it's going to inherit or it's going to be the derived class of class rectangle. So we're simply going to add to its private stuff a Z variable. And then on the public interface, we're just going to build on. We're just going to keep on going as part of its public interface. So we're going to have ourselves a little constructor here. We're going to do the, the uh, parameters with the default arguments thing again. So we're going to need three this time because we're going to have three dimensions we have to initialize. We're going to invoke the parent constructor, the base class constructor, and the base class of solid is going to be class rectangle. And we'll pass to it the I and J parameters. And then we will use the K parameter to update Z. So that's good to go. Now we'll have our accessor mutate and mutator. So we'll do um, void set Z and that's going to be setting Z to the parameter. And then we'll have our get Z method, which is going to return Z. And then we're going to have our overridden get area method because to find the area of a solid, we're going to need to return the value stored in X times the value stored in Y times the value stored in Z, right? Solid is derived from rectangle. So a solid is a rectangle. A rectangle is a square. And I guess you could say by the transitive property, that means that a solid is a square as well. Okay. Because a rectangle is everything that a square is and a solid is everything that a rectangle is. Therefore, that means that a solid is a square. So let's go ahead and test this. We'll create a solid and we'll initialize it with you know, two, one, and four, and then we'll invoke its get area method. And we should see uh, eight, two times one times four is eight. So let's confirm that, and we do. Now, it's not the only thing we can do, right? We can have as complex of a hierarchy as we need. And so you can have a base class that has multiple classes derived from it. In this example so far, each base class has only had one derived class, but we're going to add another derived class to class rectangle. So what we'll do is have class triangle be derived from class rectangle, which sounds weird, right? Because our triangle is a uh, is, is a rectangle in this example. But the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have the X and the Y 
uh, variables to store the base and the height of the triangle. And then I'll just need to redefine the get area function. So we'll do class triangle, and that is a rectangle, strange but true. And we don't need any new private stuff, so we only need to add a public interface. And for this public interface, we will inherit the constructor from class rectangle. We don't need anything new there. And then we will have our redefined get area function. And our get area function here is going to be 0 0.5 times get x times get y. And so we'll go ahead and test that out. So we'll do a triangle t and we'll pass it three and four. Then we'll go ahead and invoke its get area method. Okay, and let's not forget to put our return in here. And then we will compile and run this and we should see what six, right? Yeah, because uh, three times four times one half is six. And so as you can see in the UML diagram here that you know you can make these hierarchies as complex or as simple as you need them to be. And we have an example of a triangle that is a rectangle. A solid is a rectangle, but a triangle is not a solid because that inheritance relationship, that is a relationship, doesn't go side to side, right? So they're related, right? They both have the same parent class, but you know, they're not the same class, right? So you have a triangle and a solid that are both rectangles, but a triangle is not a solid and a solid is not a triangle. But a triangle and a solid are both squares through the fact that they're both rectangles and a rectangle is a square. So again, you can see that in the UML diagram. So now you know how to implement class hierarchies in your C++ programs.